Yeah, 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 yeah. You already know, As One Crookshank, your one and only Moose Swiftly speaker, checking in for a daily Moose Swiftly thought, giving you a perspective on teamwork that you will not get anywhere else. My goodness, my goodness, what an afternoon of college football that was yesterday. It, it's so great of an afternoon. I struggled with what story I wanted to tell you guys, and I, I settled on this one, all right? Then there were so many thoughts, so many things going on in my head watching those two games, specifically, more specifically, Michigan Penn State versus and the Alabama and Tennessee one. Now I'm a Michigan fan, so this is the reason you're getting a Michigan story. You're getting a, you're getting a storyline from the Michigan Wolverine. Not only about Michigan fan, but their running back Blake Corm is from the DMV. It's from the DMV, and I, I watched him run in the eighth grade. I watched him run when he was back in eighth grade. In fact, Penn State was actually his first offer. He got an offer from Penn State when he was just only in eighth grade. That's how good he was back then, right? Now, the reason I knew about him is because I was working for a company named FBU, stands for Football University, and his dad used to go to all the FBU camps. They were He was an FBU guy, so to speak, right? And I remember there was a spring game. The spring game he was playing. <laughs> the spring game he was playing in. This, 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 this is all about, again, sports dads, football dads, or, and or football coaches, or most likely you're doing both. Football dads, football coaches, listening, listening very, very closely, all right? <laughs> He played for a team named the Maryland Heat. The Maryland Heat, which is the number one, if I'm not mistaken, they're the number one youth football organization currently. The number one, they've been number one for years, coached by Terrence Burr. Terrence Burr does a great job. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he coaches at St. John's, St. John's College. I think he coaches at St. John's now, St. John's High School. But anyway, so it was the spring, it was during the spring season. It was the Maryland Heat taking on I believe the name of the team was the A5 Elite. Now, the A5 Elite was basically DeMatha's eighth grade team. Basically, all the, the coach was the head JV coach for DeMatha. And for those of you who don't know, that used to be the cream of the crop. You know, if you're coming out and playing football out of the DMV, you're coming out of DeMatha. DeMatha used to dominate all of the all of the recruiting process. Like, it was all about DeMatha. And the point of me telling you this now is so you guys know, they all ain't coming out to Matha no more. <laughs> Those days are done. DeMatha is just another school now, right? They're not even the main school to look at now. Don't get me wrong. They still got some dogs. They still got dogs. In fact, the center for the University of Michigan played for, he's, he came out of DeMatha. So I'm not shitting on them at all. But I do want to bring this point. I want to bring up this point because it was during that spring game where I really started to see a lot of the things that's happening now in terms of the DMV being recognized as not just being a basketball state, but also being a football state, right? So it was right before the game. And I mean, Maryland, the Maryland Heat were heavily favored to win the game and they were playing the A5 elite. Like I mentioned, they were basically the Mathas, basically the Mathas eighth grade team. And they come out, they come out knowing that they're the underdogs. A5 elite comes out knowing that they're the underdogs and they all come out in DeMatha jerseys, all of them. Blue, blue, like the full, full blown DeMatha uniform. And the coach, one of the coaches for the Maryland Heat, he daps up my man. He's actually, I can't, and the name is slipping me right now, is escaping me right now, but he used to coach at White Oak and he now coaches for St. John's and the, the Maryland Heat coach daps up my man. So he goes, what, they, they put them jerseys on like they supposed to scare us or something? They supposed to scare us and shit? <laughs> long, long story short, Blake Corum absolutely tore the ground up as, as we all expected. He busted that ass. Maryland Heat won by like 50 or something ridiculous like that. And I remember towards the end of the game, towards the end of the game, they were there were people yelling from the crowd hey 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 put a put a baseball you know he done it up put a baseball cap on it put a baseball cap on it basically say look he needs to rest you know we, we ain't got time for this he already did his thing and his dad his dad blake Corm's dad takes his hat off and throws the hat on the sideline and you know some of the other parents were getting so some, some of the other parents were getting a little upset you know they would start talking shit. <laughs> and the dad was willing the dad was willing to throw down he's putting his hands up and he's showing off he's he's willing to throw down with whoever was, you know whatever parent really wants something and that's that's what it was all about you know when it comes to being a, whether it's a football dad or a football coach I know a football dad you got to have the balls to stick up for your boys man that's what it's all about you know the more he did that you can feel it and you can see it even in the way Blake does interviews now very humble very humble because he knows he has his dad who always has his back always has his back and that's really what it's all about let's just be 100% honest you will not play this game forever. I don't care how great they call him Blake the Great. Now, his career will end, and he'll still be a very young man. And it's a matter of who 
he, who raised him, how his values are, all those kinds of things. And those are the reasons that he has played. He didn't talk his way. He played his way into the Heisman conversation. All right. Very important message to all you young athletes out there. Played his way into the Heisman conversation. Didn't talk his way to the conversation. He played his way into the conversation. Again, I will do more on this. If you have not yet, make sure you subscribe to the Move Swiftly podcast. If you're watching this on the Move Swiftly podcast, make sure you hit that follow button. Also, make your move. Make your move. M-A-K-E-Y-A-M-O-V-E dot com. Purchase all the books from Make Your Move to Swiftly, Your Guide to Innovative Teamwork, and the Six Figure Athlete and the Move Swiftly Coloring Book. It's all going down. Everything is a one-stop shop on makeyourmove.com. Also, make sure you are inquiring about the ROI hiring seminars. Those go down monthly and the Move Swiftly workshops where we're taking the right employee and the right employer and making sure we have it, we're figuring out what that match is going to be, the type of worker that you need, whether you're an employer or an employee, you should be inquiring about those as well. As one Crookshank, your one and only Move Swiftly speaker. You guys continue to move swiftly. We will talk more soon.